Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's uh, weekend offering. This is our broiler chicken show. Uh, I suppose we should rename it uh, the trading uh, community, crypto, stocks, bonds, commodities, options, and all that. But uh, I like the name Broiler Chickens. It's kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, um, welcome back. Uh, we'll probably spend maybe an hour here, so I don't really want to go too long. I don't know why I end up doing these marathons, but uh, let's just see if YouTube's working. Uh, hey, it is. Awesome. Um, so, uh, welcome YouTubers. I see Sjord, you're over there on YouTube. Uh, you want to, um, uh, keep, uh, keep, uh, the, <laughs> the corral in check over there on YouTube, but, uh, by all means, if you have a question, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, we'll try as best as we can to answer questions. Keep in mind, and actually I heard uh, Grimm say this in the level one class today, just so perfect. Remember trading is more of an art form than a science. What we really need to do is to uh, try and figure out what works best for us individually and then just rinse and repeat. Um, of course, we all want to um, uh, try and follow trading plans. Uh, keep in mind, risking money in the marketplace is it's pretty stressful, right? It's, it's just it's, a, it's hard work. Um, and uh, filled with anxiety, oh my God, am I going to make money, am I not? Um, and the whole reason why we uh, you know, teach this concept of working with trading plans is to try and help you reduce your anxiety. Um, all right, so uh, out of the level one class, and keep in mind a big part of why I like to do this broiler chicken show is that I actually wait for the uh, level one class to finish. Um, <clears throat> they just did volume impetus, uh, and actually a really good, um, really good conversation about who's driving the bus. Are the bulls in control? Are the bears in control? Um, so by all means, if there are any level oneers that are on the call here, uh, you know, and you have further questions, you know, please uh, reach out and ask. Um, <clears throat> as well too, I, I kind of like to go through the Twitter feed. Just to try and explain what I've been thinking over the past week, uh, there was our last offer saying, uh, offering back at the end of June. I uh, hope all the Americans had a good uh, holiday, uh, Fourth of July. Uh, we here in Canada celebrated uh, Canada Day, July first. Um, we've been talking a lot through the past week that this has been a really screwy uh, market um, because we had both international, uh, you know, um, <laughs> not international, but uh, various different country have holidays uh, this time, markets closed, bond desk closed, bankers uh, not at work. Uh, the Americans, of course, had their holiday right in the middle of the week, so that made some really interesting price action uh, around those events. And then, of course, we had a, a big employment report that was out Friday, um, and uh, then we had options expiry around that, so interesting to see price action through that. Um, we should probably start to get settled back into sort of, you know, quote-unquote normal uh, seasonal trade. And the interesting thing with the stock market is usually, uh, you know, there's an old expression, uh, sell in May and walk away. Uh, interestingly enough, we had a pretty big pivot come in uh, basically into the end of May, beginning of June. And frankly speaking, this actually surprised me quite a bit. Um, I have been hearing a lot of cycle people uh, were actually looking for a uh, pivot around the middle of July. Uh, and I also noticed too, if I'm not mistaken, that um, there's supposed to be a big uh, US congressional testimony by um, the guy who was investigating uh, the uh, president of the United States for sort of election tampering and collusion with international countries uh, around this date too. So, um, I do notice that the stock market to a certain degree is heavily, heavily manipulated right now. Um, could we see, you know, they just took the markets to new highs. Could we see a pullback through sort of the first couple of weeks of July? Uh, that's definitely possible. Um, 
But, you know, once we do get beyond sort of that June time period seasonally, uh, we start setting ourselves up for um, <clears throat> uh, second quarter earnings reporting season. So uh, this all might be a conversation now in the next couple of weeks about what is the quality of corporate earnings. Um, and um, um, to that effect, actually, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about we may not actually get a quote unquote sort of economic recession. Uh, Main Street's feeling pretty positive. Jobs report on Friday was uh, pretty positive. Um, but this may be what they call an earnings recession, where earnings aren't that great. So um, be cognizant of that. And then also, like I said, uh, heavy uh, manipulation in the uh, market these days. Uh, the guy who's running the United States of America, if he can, um, you know, um, I don't know whether you say running, but uh, is basically the uh, the um, leader of the executive branch. Uh, would he leave Wall Street manipulation open to the people that sort of are driving uh, the bus there if it helps his election um, can, uh, cause going forward? I absolutely think so. So don't be shocked if we see price all over the place here. Not really much to report on this chart. I just wanted to mention that sort of mid-July uh, pivot event that we're looking for. Um, <clears throat> Algo Signal's been all over the map here. Um, some buy, some sells. Um, I, I, you know, I used to trade crude for a prop firm, so uh, um, I uh, love to watch crude really closely, and it was really interesting to watch how crude sort of oscillating between. Uh, bullish algo signals and then bearish algo signals and now crudes actually flip back to the bull camp um, and interesting little W working here so we'll keep an eye on that through the week and really that should make sense I've often find um, that um, um, crude is very one directional heading through uh, the end of June uh, through that sort of seasonal trough um, and we have uh, the upcoming hurricane season um, and, um, you know, that's all the fear around Gulf of Mexico and production there. Um, and any sort of threat of hurricanes, I don't know whether you guys remember, uh, BP from years ago, they got into a bunch of trouble with their, uh, Gulf of Mexico operations. Um, but, uh, that's always a threat. And so as a result, crude usually catches a bid. So actually, it doesn't surprise me to see these uh, bottoms trying to come in here and Algo spitting out uh, bullish signals here. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether there's too much else I really want to talk about on this screen. Um, one thing I will say, though, that, you know, and, you know, I don't know whether it's a popular sentiment or not. But we have an old expression, uh, you know, U.S. dollar obviously did uh, much better uh, on that employment report data. We do have very nasty market structure here, so I don't know whether U.S. dollars actually rolled over here in earnest or whether this was a big trap. Um, you know, obviously U.S. dollars big, huge uh, driver uh, based on whether the uh, Fed's going to continue raising rates, um, and of course that doesn't help uh, Mr. Executive Branch in the U.S. He would love to uh, have uh, short-term interest rates lowered. But the jobs data seems to be pretty positive, so I can't see the Fed cutting rates in the face of that. And uh, U.S. dollar here has uh, enjoyed a really nice counter trend rally. We talked a little bit about that in the uh, uh, that little market summary that I did on Friday for the uh, for the uh, YouTube audience. Um, but what I wanted to mention about that is uh, I'm a really big fan of yen gold, <clears throat> um, and whichever way. Uh, the yen is going odds are gold's probably heading in that same sort of direction so if we're thinking uppy on us dollar are we thinking downy on yen um and we have an old expression in the market uh be careful if you ever see the market starting to smile at you so you can see that the yen actually did confirm its smile there on friday i always love how trading view puts these tools right over exactly where you want to look on the chart <laughs> anyway uh that's here now there um, so a little bit of uh, caution for yen. Of course, I showed you that dollar chart. And, we, you know, this yen chart sure has moved up a hell of a lot. Lots of gaps and stuff to the downside. You can see where reload zones are. Interesting how 78.6 lines up off of that gap nicely. Um, and, of course, you know, uh, a lot of people that are involved in crypto are also uh, gold bugs and silver bugs. 
And I'm a little bit concerned about this gold market. It's looking pretty dangerous. Um, and if we do just reload some ohms back up top, you can see that uh, this potential smiley face is coming in basically where it's supposed to come in if uh, it's just a normal healthy trading range. So a uh, little bit worried about this. And actually, that's the end. Sorry. Uh, let's throw up that gold chart. <clears throat> Gold didn't have that um, that same reload zone, but um, uh, well, man, tough to make uh, too much of a comparison on that reload zone concept. But if we think reload zones down below, what I'm worried about here for the gold market is uh, I'll just do simple trend lines. Right. I think that there's a lot of impetus for our gold market to come back uh, to this sort of level in here. And as I did just a moment ago, that's uh, that's going to line up nicely with this reload zone. And it's going to uh, fill in a bunch of gaps here that uh, have been left. There's a gap. There's a gap. There's a gap. Um, so could we get some pullback here? That really wouldn't surprise me. There's even cheeky little gaps all the way down below if we... Um, if we uh, do the higher time frame reload zone, notice that that little gap actually lines up with 78.6 there. So maybe that sort of aligns with the uh, yen chart. So long and short of it here, I'm a little bit leery about gold right here. This looks a little dangerous, but we'll see. Only time will to hell. Uh, if you're a bull, then you probably want to see just sort of a nice uh, consolidation here uh maybe you know something like a potential bot right one low two lows three lows and then head higher so this still needs some more time to clean up but considering all these gaps and reload zones and then my good old uh yen gold relationship uh, uh this looks tough so uh, we also talked uh, recently in the daily briefs about how there was um I don't know how many days ago I did that. I think it was on the third. Uh, am I lucky? Nope, not the third. Uh, which one was it? Uh, but we did a um, really cool study on, maybe it was the second, on the correlation of a number of these fear assets. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, and, uh, you can see they are, this is uh, gold, Bitcoin, uh, treasury yields are basically bond prices and the Japanese yen. Um, we can see that they were all sort of moving up in tandem together and they're all, and not all of them, but a, g a good chunk of these guys are looking a little bit, uh, dangerous. Um, so, you know, let's uh, let's maybe um, temper our enthusiasm for fear assets if uh, that U.S. dollar is uh, feeling a little bit stronger. Uh, we might see a lot of these things come back down to earth. Um, I'm still, you know, really on the fence about where Bitcoin really falls in this. Is Bitcoin a growth asset? Is Bitcoin a fear asset? I'm a little worried that the uh, talking heads of late have now, you know, especially on, you know, uh, TV channels like that CNBC are uh, starting to talk about digital gold, digital gold, right? And that's the only way that they refer to Bitcoin. I honestly don't know uh, where Bitcoin falls in this, but as I showed you with that correlation chart, if if it does fall in the in the fear asset category, eh, then maybe we have to be a little bit um, cautious. Um, you know, probably not a bad idea. We just take a minute and talk a little bit about this. This is the weekly Bitcoin chart. Um, I've been putting out sort of tweets and references to the fact that uh, very well-defined technical objectives uh, were hit here. This A, B, C, D harmonic pattern. Um, I thought that was absolutely beautiful and it's incredible to watch these things come in. And the level oneers, what I really need for you guys to take away from this, if you're watching this later on, is um, is um, when you get A, B equals C, D extension levels line up with things like reload zones and higher time frame FIB levels, mountain man level here. That it's just incredibly powerful level. Uh, and sure enough, you can see how the market um, played off of that. 
you know, once that rally was done, then, okay, where are we likely to sort of pull back to sort of start our consolidation? Um, I found it interesting. Of course, we zipped all the way up here to $13,880. Wow, what a level. And interesting, too, I find this fascinating, is if we change this to a line chart, notice that the original actual market structure failure was right off of that level, right? I mean, that's almost shocking that the closed level on this day, the original M, where basically all this sort of higher time frame institutional players, they all see this level in glorious technicolor, and they look back and go, oh, man, if I was going to be short, I should so sure be short from that level right there. That's the level. Um, and then we go and we look and we see what price did. You can see it went zipping right up into there. Basically gave all the institutions that wanted to show their, you know, their trading desks and all that kind of stuff where the appropriate level to be short Bitcoin is. And sure enough, that's exactly where the market stopped. I mean, that's almost freaky when you see that happen. I mean, that's, that just, to me, that's startling. I mean, maybe to you guys, it's just like, meh, not really that big of a thing. But when I saw that, I was just like, wow, I can't believe that. But it's just so cliche. So in essence, what this is sort of saying, top of the range here, 13,880, is um, we pretty much just rallied right back into the original cell level. Um, now, the back off, usually uh, big fat round numbers. And of course, in this case, we got the biggest, the fattest, the juiciest round number you could possibly imagine. Good old $10,000. I mean, wow, what a big fat round number that is. Where do we have to go on that? So it's like right in that area. Um, in a weird sort of way, it almost acts as like a psychological magnet. Um, so I think that the market, uh, if it was going to find some support, you know, it was going to find, and also, too, you can see horizontal support and resistance. There probably were a lot of people that saw this, you know, this breakout. Technically, this is another W. And said, man, if it ever gets back down to there, I totally want to be a buyer from it. Yeah. And then also, too, and I don't know whether you can see this or not, uh, but I'm a really big fan of uh, the 38.2 FIB. Oops, what did I do there? Um, and you can see how 38.2 FIB was 9770. And we came down to a low here of 9614. Uh, and then smartly reversed off of that. Uh, what I do find fascinating about this weekly chart is uh, if you just simply draw a trend line from this peak against this low, and you can see those tail lows there as well, that one trend line has been incredibly powerful. This is what I like to call a high-low trend line, where you draw your trend line from a, a pivot high against a subsequent pivot low. Um, and you can see that even just on the pullback off of the original highs, this was the uh, Bitcoin dad uh, testnet, testifying in front of Congress all that kind of thing. Um, basically, the market came right back into that high-low trend line and bounced right back up, and then back down and bounced up, and then back down, and then, oh, lost it, and then tried to rally back up and recapture it, and, oh, now that, that was resistance. And then we puked out 78.6 off higher time frames. Talked about that as sick-ass trade location. Big old W comes in. We rally right back up to that original trend line, and interesting how this doji shooting star low is right on that trend line. Um, we opened up, we lost the trend line, then we jackknifed back above it. So my hunch is this one trend line actually, I think, is actually defining the Bitcoin market right now. Call me crazy. But anyway, that's sort of what I see happening here. Um, over the short term, you know, keep in mind this is a weekly price chart, but over the short term, Still feeling as though we're kind of trapped in a trading range now. Obviously, Mountain Man, the original market structure fail level, uh, AB equals CDs, that's your top end of the range. Um, and then the bottom end of the range, 38.2, big fat round numbers, uh, our trend line support, 
interesting to see moving averages are basically going parabolic right here i'm trying to play catch up with price my hunch is that as this if this is a top right as this develops you're going to find that the moving average slowly works up and then if we lose it then boom moving average crossover that's that's the end of the bull run uh we're nowhere near that right now i mean not even close to that conversation and i think i've said in in recent um uh broadcasts and stuff that I'm not really the biggest fan of hunting shorts off of Bitcoin right now because we have sort of our trending signal telling us that the trend is up. And I've, you know, sort of been musing publicly that I still think that pullbacks are buying opportunities. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Only time will to hell. Uh, one thing you got to love about the Bitcoin community is they, they, uh, they are definitely, um, you know, rah, rah, bull um we'll see how it goes i mean you could make an argument that europe now um is um is definitely in in the throes of you know a little bit of chaos uh and and we were musing on the daily brief over the past week that uh christine lagarde now who's a really interesting character she's not even a banker by trade is now being proposed to head the ecb um, and that event will happen in November and the market always loves to test new governors. You see how, uh, the guy down in uh, the States, Powell right now, he's, uh, been tested quite severely, uh, by the market. Um, and my hunch is that, uh, if she decides to take the job, she's going to get tested in earnest, which might in, you know, over the next few years, it might inject some serious uh, demand into uh, safe haven assets like uh, Bitcoin, but we'll see what happens. Um, actually, it might be interesting to look at like a uh, Bitcoin chart in Euro terms, because, you know, given that brief conversation about uh, Europe, uh, we've been talking lots recently. Um, and this probably isn't the best chart, probably this one over here. Um, you know, the euro, the euro is is really looking weak here. Uh, and you can see that there's this big old hole on the charts on the euro down here. This profile still needs to be filled in. Um, I'm still leaning towards the bullish camp on the U.S. dollar. and actually might be a good idea. We haven't done this in a while. Um, whoops. Uh, if we go look at the currencies, uh, trends, yeah, U.S. dollar still pointing bullishly. Euro still pointing bearishly. Um, the one that's sort of bucking that trend was the yen here. But now, you know, our talk recently about yen gold and stuff like that, a little bit concerned about them. Uh, commodity currencies, now keep in mind, uh, Canadian dollar is uh, very crude oil oriented. So, you know, encouraging to see that the Canadian dollar is trying to bottom here. Uh, Aussie still looks a mess, and that's probably a, a function of metal prices. Um, same thing with South Africa. And maybe we could make the argument that the Russian ruble, uh, you know, Russian, um, very oil dependent on that for their economy. No, it's still pointing up. So kind of a mixed bag out of the commodity currencies. Um, but on balance, you know, until this relationship actually rolls over on the U.S. dollar, I still have to be leaning dollar bull. Uh, actually, this will be really interesting. Um, the level oneers just did candlestick patterns. Really good example of a weekly empire there on the euro. So let's see if that empire fires. If it does. Uh, that that would be pretty bearish uh, for Europe, and I suppose you could argue to a certain degree we've got a uh, a gap and go scenario on the U.S. dollar. This is also what we like to call a Doji gap or Joby gap. God rest your soul, Joby. Um, and if we go through this high, those are both short-term bullish signals on the U.S. dollar. Uh, and then also, too, the exact opposite of this uh, euro, we would create an inverted empire formation there on the U.S. dollar. So uh, anyway, you shake it. It's awfully tough to be bullish of European currencies right now. Anyway, uh, sort of a side conversation. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so uh, back to our conversation about Bitcoin. You know, I think the trend is still up. Uh, you know, there's no reason to suggest that the trend has changed here yet. 
I think we had just absolutely insane face rip up. We hit some key technical objectives. Uh, we've pulled back, and now uh, we're just deciding, okay, what's the next move? And this should take some time to develop here. This, I think I even said in uh, one of those recent uh, free videos that I do on a daily basis, the 10-minute ones, that this isn't going to resolve in one week. This is probably going to take the rest of the summer uh, to resolve um, either bull or bear. Um, and, you know, we do have a big fundamental event coming up in the uh, Bitcoin space, well, really crypto space with this uh, Litecoin happening. Um, and my hunch is, is that, you know, and I've talked to the community at length about this recently, is that I feel as though that uh, they basically did the rally that we were expecting on Litecoin into reload zones, into AB equals CD targets. Um, you can see the potential fractal that uh, could fire here. It hasn't yet. Um, and the halvening event, usually I've found that price usually pauses about a month or so ahead of the halvening events. Um, and so, uh, it, you know, Litecoin's going through its very natural pause before the halvening event. Uh, the question ultimately is what's what's the story following this happening event? Do we M out here and then that's it for the uh, Litecoin rally? Um, or can we just consolidate sideways, W out, and we start working our way higher? Uh, right now, I think the jury's still out. Uh, I just don't have any clear signals uh, from Litecoin. I'm a little worried that things like uh, oscillators are getting uh, flashing overbought readings. I don't really have any confirmed divergence here out of MACD. Uh, volume impetus is still, you know, higher highs, higher highs. We did have the bears definitely wake up and say, hey, you know, we're alive. Don't forget about us. Um, so, you know, as I said before, I'm just sort of on pause here with regard to Litecoin. Um, interestingly enough, you know, in these uh, public offerings that I've been doing recently, one of the markets that I've been sort of suggesting that I think that uh, could still offer some good upside is this Ethereum. We came up against a pretty important uh, horizontal support and resistance level, and I don't know why my charts look so shitty. I just don't get it. Um, I mean, I know Stamp, they've been trading since before August 2017. Um, I don't know whether this is trading view or what, but... Man, this chart data looks like crap. Sorry, guys. Uh, nope, they're just not going to change it. Uh, maybe let's do a new one. Uh, e T H U S D. Um, if I go this over here, no, it's the same thing. Isn't that bizarre? That must be a, something a problem with trading view. We go Coinbase. Hey, there, Coinbase gives us some data. Uh, we can go just even off of these lows. There's 78.6 there. Actually, this might be a really good example of 88.6. Uh, that goes out to, yeah, Ian. Ian, if you're watching this later on, that's your level. We like to call this the Leprechavark level because <laughs> he's from Ireland. Uh, kind of a funny joke, but uh, nonetheless, uh, looks like this market bottomed off of 88.6. Uh, if we think that, um, you know, um, oops, uh, Ethereum ought to do what Bitcoin did uh, and what Litecoin's done, then that means we should be looking for things like 50% rules. So, uh, ironically enough, I still think there's a heck of a lot of money to be made in this Ethereum. We'll see what happens. Only time will tell. Kind of like how Bitcoin uh, rallied up against its sort of clothesline uh, level and then failed. You could argue that this is a massive M. And interesting how Ethereum rallied right up into that level. And all the institutions that, you know, show their shareholders and stuff, look at this is how we do this, this is how we do that kind of thing. Um, you know, we trade M's and W's. This is bearish market structure. They were just waiting for a counter trend rally up into this area to hit that. So I think that's sort of a, a, a pretty big reason why uh, this thing failed there. Um, 
But on balance, man, I mean, if we can clear through here, then, you know, I think we got a pretty good shot of zipping up into this area up here. But I've been, I, I, you know, I, uh, I've been surprised at the noticeable lack of performance out of Ethereum of late. Um, but nonetheless, you know, you can see it is what it is. You can see the W had you taken this long. I think I even remember I uh, did a... Um, a uh, show a week or two ago and uh, Dav was on it and he's still all rah rah bull uh, Ethereum so we'll see how that goes anyway um, you know if we throw on uh, I, man, I don't want to spend too much time on this anyway uh, the point of the matter here is um, we are you know currently on the Bitcoin price uh, consolidating um, and I don't know whether it's really in anybody's best interest to take too big a bets right here. This is what I was worried about is a lot of people are saying, okay, should I come in and invest in Bitcoins right here? And really, you know, the way I look at this, this is a coin toss. And I'm not really in the business of taking uh, trades that are coin tosses, you know, 50%. We could uh, heads I win, tails you lose. Uh, if it comes up heads, maybe we rally up against these old highs. If it comes up tails, we dump back down into these lows. And, you know, I hate to say when people sort of like are, well, you're a technician. You're supposed to know where the market goes. No, that's not the case. Uh, as technicians, what we're supposed to do is trying to identify when the odds are in our favor um, and then act. Right now, what I see, you know, for investors is we're just basically, you know, there is the 50% rule. This is 50% of this range. We're literally sitting right on that level and just parked. Um, so, you know, that's sort of the commentary. The good part about this and sort of like when I did this tweet out through the week, I sort of said, you know, are there some general uh, conclusions that we can make out of this? Number one. Uh, trending higher, lower time frame. So like things like four hour bots and all those kind of fun things uh, within a higher time frame range, right? And think reload zones, that kind of talk. Uh, no divergences confirmed. And I was worried last week when this, uh, this candle, when it opened up and it was red, we were starting to get signs that, hey, maybe this divergence might confirm if we crapped out here, but you can see price is relatively happy right now. Keep in mind, this is early on a Sunday. There's still about another six hours to go on this candle. Anything can happen. And I often see that when I'm done these sort of public videos, price will roll over or will ratchet up later on in the day. So, you know, this is sort of mid-Sunday, but we can't really conclude what happens there until we actually beep, finish this candle and print, start printing a new weekly candle. But on balance, if we do finish in this area, I don't see any signs of failure here yet. Got to sneeze. Hold on. All right. That's done. Um, and the way our sort of trade process we like to do is we like to say, uh, give me trade location. Then show me signs of divergence, and ideally we'd love to see divergence with our overbought, oversold indicators, either overbought or oversold in whatever direction it is we're hunting. And then show me things like a nice M to actually risk against. You know, I'm going to frame my trade based off of the M. So as I said a few minutes ago, we don't, we don't even have any of that. Yeah, we had a market rally into a level. Uh, trade location up top here, but no signs of divergence just yet. Uh, kind of like the Ethereum and the Litecoin, we can see that the bears have said, hey, you know, we're here. Don't ignore us. We're, we're awake, but the bull is still driving the bus. Um, and actually, the level oneers just did this today um, in that uh, – when we're studying volume, what we really want to see is we want to look at, you know, I personally like using OBV. You can use things like MFI, accumulation distribution, and actually in our algo um, that uh, I built, this uh, DI, it's equally weighted between price momentum and volume momentum, and it has OBV, MFI, accumulation distribution in the ingredients, in the algo. 
So it's not really like OBV is the only one to use. I just happen to like it. It's a sentimental favorite of mine. Um, and it clearly illustrates sort of who's driving the bus here. So as of this point right here, and you can see the bears just slowly went to sleep, the bulls woke up, and they took over. As long as we keep seeing higher green bars, see how this bar here is low, but this bar here is higher, higher green bar, yay. And this green bar right here is higher than these, yay, higher highs, right? And then this one here, this, you know, like these two together, higher highs, yay. You know, the bull is still in control. Um, and you can see on the OBV index, it basically just validates that. So, you know, where to actually see, number one, uh, well, to see this actually roll over and start, you know, printing bear, we need to see the bulls fall asleep. And we're kind of getting that this week. You can see that the buying interest wasn't nearly as strong as this, but that's just one point. Interestingly enough, with uh, with um, volume impetus, we actually want to see one high, two highs, and then a third high, and then a failure through this level here to actually tell us that they've fallen asleep. So like the bears here, for example, you can see they were very active, right? And then they start, so there's one high, then a second high, then third highs, and then, oh, and then, whoa, the bear said, oh, no, no, oh, we're still here, we're still here. And then, you know, one high, two highs, three highs, okay, they've fallen asleep. So kind of, and then, you know, if we go back uh, to, the, to measure the bulls, you can see high here, then a lower high, then these highs, even though price is going absolutely insane and everybody's thinking they're going to buy Lambos and they're going to get rich, Notice the volume bars did not make a new high. When do we go through the middle part? Think these this third level right in here. We I mean, one, two, three. Well, that actually happened. Looks like right in this area, right? The bulls officially fell asleep, and you can see the bulls just they were completely asleep through all of this. And then finally down in here, the bulls actually start waking up again. Uh, we actually see the indicator itself start to turn up. At this point here, we're now actually starting to get higher highs and higher lows out of the green bars. So uh, hopefully that helps the level oneers. I thought they did a pretty good job, and Grim did a pretty good job with that today. So, you know, if you do have further questions in the level one and you still can't wrap your head around this uh, volume impetus, just think of it. Simply put, am I seeing out of the green or red bars what is happening out of the OBV? So in this case, OBV turned up bullishly here. We see higher green bars validating that the bulls are in control. We don't really see all of a lot of red bars validating that the bears really are not interested. And as long as that stays the case, then I think everything's tickety-boo. Um, so we talked a little bit about price momentum. Uh, interestingly enough to see on the weekly basis, Willie still has not gotten technically stupid. For me, I built this indicator to help me sort of identify overly uh, 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 um, overbought and oversold conditions as a weekly price chart. You can see that the market can get, you know, in this case, overly sold, oversold, and stay there for quite a while. But in essence, this is start our warning sign that, hey, you know, maybe the bear case is getting a little bit old. Um, so at this point, if I start to see uh, things like uh, um, Willy, that which is the moving average of this modified Williams percentage R, when I start to see it get above minus 20 here, that tells me that the market is stupidly overbought, kind of like this. And it was so difficult to tell people through this, like, just cool your jets, don't chase it. And people are saying, what the hell, man? It's It's gone up like 20x. It's just really, it's not the best place to be a buyer, right? If you want to be a buyer, look at this beautiful action down in here. Um, and sure enough, here's the other side of that. Um, again, you know, not necessarily saying that this is really the best place to buy, but this uh, overbought, oversold oscillator just said, you know, bears, eh, you know, you missed the trade. The trade was up here. And this is the end result. Vroom. 
anybody who was shorting down here got you know bitch slapped um so hey, good to see that we're not stupidly overbought yet that's encouraging um so you know this just further validates i got no breakdown in volume i got no breakdown in price momentum uh the raw momentum push and the market technically isn't stupidly overbought yet uh, we rallied up into a higher time frame level. We backed off into a lower time frame level. And now we're just sort of stuck in a trading range. Wow, that sure was a mouthful. Hope that helps. Um, let's maybe zoom down to a lower time frame then. Well, Brian, you know, weekly charts are saying that. Actually, this is interesting commentary. We've talked lots about this recently. When are the altcoins going to wake up? Is there going to be an altcoin summer? Um, you know, these big cap indexes, of course, uh, Ethereum is probably a part of that. It would be interesting to go through and see who is actually uh, driving this. But you can clearly see Ws are trying to come in off of these big cap uh, indexes. So somebody is waking up here in earnest. Actually, maybe what we should do is... Um, is it Ethereum? Maybe. Uh, I know he's in one of the big cap indexes. Um, I did used to like to uh, do uh, the big uh, cap uh, uh, coins and sort of measure them versus... Uh, um, yeah, I don't really see anybody here jumping out at me. You know, there's Ethereum popping up there a bit, but I do see things like XLM broke down. Um, not getting it from here. I wonder who's driving this bus. Somebody's trying to force the bottom to come in there. Uh, let's see if maybe the mid tier ones are. This is uh, uh, Joshua's fundamentalist. Oh, Monero's perking up here a bit. That might be driving the bus a little bit. Hmm, interesting. I'm not quite sure. Is this NEM taking off here? Yeah, looks like it's sort of stuck there. I don't know who's driving this. It'd be interesting. Uh, maybe as sort of a side assignment on the site today, guys, we can sort of figure out who, whoops, where the hell did that go? There it is. Who it is that's trying to actually uh, force these indexes to turn back up. Um, it was interesting, uh, too, uh, you know, Doge, and I actually strapped on a little long on Doge. There's a cute little trade. I mean, basically buying the W there. Uh, this was the coin that somebody asked about last uh, Broiler Chicken show, that BTT. I, eh, I threw it on a little bit there at 11 ticks. I think I told the public I was going to do that. So you can't say that Brian isn't actually doing stuff um, um, in, the, uh, in the altcoin market. It's just, you know, the big problem in the altcoin market right now is Trex and the way they're just crapping all over this space and just, you know, just, you know, crapping out on on all the shult coins so uh, there are individual stories and it's interesting because i even uh posted you know tweets and stuff that <laughs> you want you want your coin to do well get it the fuck off of tracks and get on over to binance <laughs> it's just that simple <laughs> and literally the the you know there was so much lobbying to get uh doge listed on on binance the day that cz announced okay i'll, I'll okay fine I'll, I'll i'll placate you people we'll put doge on on binance the damn thing popped <laughs> and somebody said you know and and i guess i'm uh, you know this is actually not a bad dovetail um I'm, I'm a big fan of mar uh, market structure, right? M's and W's. You've probably heard that out the yin yang from Brian. And uh, some, and and um, I, Doge is a cute one because you can see that he loves to W and then just take off like a rocket. W, take off. W, take off. And notice here, even too, this is cool. You can see how the market tried to W, no dice. And then tried to W, no dice. So in comes a W, and it's actually on pretty darn good looking volume too. Um, and so I just said, you know, and I think the comment was, uh, you know, if, if you can leverage Binance, go for it, do that. Um, but like Doge loves them Ws. Uh, I don't know whether there's a Dogecon this year or not. 
Uh, I can't remember just off the top of my head. I don't think there is. But uh, these guys, the one thing you got to love about Doge is they really know how to pump their, their story. <laughs> so, uh, you know, W comes in, and I'll just take the W. Uh, I'm perfectly fine just basically buying the breakout uh, and risking to a break of these lows. And somebody even uh, said to me, holy crap, you actually, like, uh, are going to publish where your stops are? And I just said, look at, you know, if this W fails, I probably don't want to be in the trade. Um, so I'm more than happy just to be long this W. And if we break this W, I'm just going to walk away. I'll take, like, I think this is, like, a, it's got about a 30% uh, hit. But I don't mind that. It's really not bad considering that potential profit on move just back to 50% rule and trend line is a double. Uh, that's not bad risk rewards. It's pretty attractive. So uh, I have no opinion whatsoever. None whatsoever. And you can basically see it's just sitting right where basically we bought it. No opinion whatsoever. I just simply bought the W and I'm just going to live with the results. If it fails, it fails. So what? Next trade next in 10 minutes. It's just trader's life. Um, I actually am really uh, happy to see that um, um, we've got things like our trade journaling tool. This is our, our, uh, our um, developer cycle for sites like TRI. One of the things that we built to try and help um, uh, level oneers learn how to trade and manage your behaviors is we have this trade journal tool. And you can even see here on the trade journal, I'm posting these trades. So we'll just see what happens. No emotion. Setup comes in, take appropriate risk, away you go. Um, so really cool how uh, I'm actually now uh, reporting uh, all these journals and entries and trades on the site too. So I'm super, super proud of Seward. Uh, man, he's been working really, really hard building out our dashboard to give us tools that we can use on a daily basis. Um, and it's coming along nicely. Still some bugs. It's still very much a lot of beta. We're, we're going through the developer cycle trying to build this stuff out. Uh, but slowly but surely, things are coming along. So I feel pretty good about that. Uh, somebody said XMR is the one that's driving all this. Uh, XMR. Where's my XMR? Uh, don't have him there. Uh, maybe that's why I can't see this. XMR. That's Monero, isn't it? Monero? Yeah, so that's this bad boy, eh? So that's the one you figure is driving the bus here. And you know the irony of it all, and, you know, this is where, you know, this whole sort of uh, – Bitcoin maximalists and all that kind of stuff, you know, it, it kind of picks me a little bit. I mean, a chart is a chart is a chart. Hopefully everybody can see uh, cute little W's finally came in on this one down here. Uh, breakout. We've got our trending signal here. And, you know, as good technicians, just like we saw in Bitcoin, no reason why we can't work our way back up to $254 on this thing. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, it's just rinse and repeat. So, uh, you know, congratulations to anybody who's uh, riding the XMR train right now. Choo-choo. Uh, as long as the trending signal is working in your favor, I don't see any reason why this can't work its way up there. This is a very natural level for the market to move towards that 50% rule. And if you're not familiar with this, if you're like watching on the YouTube page, never seen this stuff before, this, I mean, take a screenshot of that, right? Let's just see what happens. Uh, we could have done exactly the same conversation. Uh, in fact, we even did this um, on the uh, site, um, you know, over the past six months. Hopefully you can say, you look at this and you go, holy for holy, I can't believe that. It's exactly the same thing. There's really very little difference here. It's just price action is price action. Uh, if we do 50% rubble on yield Bitcoin, there's 50%. Actually, this must be log scale. All right, so there is uh, Bitcoin's price range. I mean, it looks almost identical to that XMR, right? There's the W, there's the trending signal, and away we go. Looks like XMR is sort of like right about here right now. So... You know, maybe this is going to be uh, that altcoin season, right, that everybody's uh, hoping and praying for. You know, we got a nice little pop-up here through sort of, you know, 
end of July, August. That's usually the altcoin sort of friendly uh, time of year. You know, maybe you see names like this actually pop up and hit those technical objectives. Really wouldn't be too shocking. Um, all right, so back to our story. Very interesting to see. And I think I even mentioned this uh, recently in these videos. Like, I can't really start getting too bullish of the altcoins until we actually start seeing the Ws coming in. And the cool part about doing these videos week after week after week is you literally watch the evolution of this stuff as it's happening. And, oh, boy, here comes some Ws on the big boys. Uh, haven't quite got it on the fundamental names yet. Would like to obviously see some perk up here. And then the shulk coins, that's still a V. And keep in mind, like I said just a minute ago, Trex is still just shitting all over the shulk coins. <laughs> How ironic. Uh, fecal references right out the, <laughs> the bum. Oh, there's another fecal reference. <laughs> So I still think this needs more time to develop. We'd like to see the Schultz start looking like this. That would be encouraging. Also, too, this is a really good commentary, and I've seen a lot of talk on crypto Twitter about this. <laughs> Fecal fundamentals. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. But actually, I think a lot of people in the community have sort of bought into this idea, and I kind of like it. I think it makes sense. Is uh, when we have Bitcoin face ripping up, uh, the alts are kind of, I uh, can't really do much. When we have Bitcoin face ripping down, the alts are like, oh, no, man, this sucks, oh, nothing. But when we get the Bitcoin price just going sideways, and remember, that's sort of like this conversation, right, where we're in a trading range and we're just going to go sideways for a while. I think actually that's the kind of environment that, that altcoins can actually sort of come back to life. So I do like that, that sort of chatter that I've been seeing on uh, Twitter and stuff um about that recently because i i think that's accurate um so long and short of it here it looks like and we sort of talked about this recently too it's sort of like the we're in sort of that mid-tier sort of market right now the big boys have to a certain degree you know think of things like bitcoin and litecoin they've done their technical bounces right that's sort of this and i think now it's sort of the mid-tiers time to actually have their sort of time in the in the sun and in a weird sort of way, I'm, I've gotten sort of the feeling that Ethereum has kind of settled back down into sort of mid-tier -st story. Uh, it used to be sort of like number two, but I actually find that Litecoin to a certain degree has been trying to overtake uh, Ethereum for number two. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, we could very easily see Ethereum as a big pop here and regain sort of beloved status. We'll see how it goes. Um, now, if we drill down to sort of like lower time frames, um, what am I sort of watching right now? Um, I've been vetting out this algorithm setup uh, for the past six months uh, religiously here. Um, and, and I was even sort of, uh, you know, I started uh, vetting this setup back in December. Um, and this is, you know, like everybody's sort of like, what does it look like to actually vet a setup? How much time should you actually put into it? I love the fact that our level one instructor starts off all of the level oneers with, you cannot start trading real money until you've done a hundred paper trades. I love that. That's music to my ears. <laughs> but, you know, this is a very typical sort of process. I'm vetting this setup in real time. I'm not using the computer to do some sort of back testing because frankly speaking, I don't think that back testing works. I've seen lots and lots of people, you know, run their back testers and stuff and look at these wonderful results and I'm going to be a millionaire. And then they actually start trading it in real time and it doesn't work worth shit. Uh, and they just sit there going, why does this not make sense? Why is it not working? You have to understand a lot of like back testing and stuff. You know, if you're going to use things like exponential moving averages, the exponential moving average itself changes over time. Um, so if you do like a back test using exponential moving averages from way back here, they will not look the same as if you were running them in real time. It's it's really freaky part about um, technical analysis and using things like exponential moving averages. And keep in mind, things like MACD are built on exponential moving averages. So if you run a back tester 
you're going to get actually completely different information than if you were running it in real time. So uh, uh, with all that said, um, I'm absolutely in love with my little algo here. It's been producing some really, really great signals of late. Um, in essence, um, you know, it caught this beautiful bullish bot breakout in here. Um, and interestingly enough, it basically ran uh, longs all the way up into this uh, stop level. Uh, it just kept moving its stops up, higher highs and higher lows to find a bull market. And then this was the first, uh, you know, uh, moment off of that long setup that actually printed a lower high and lower, uh, a lower, um, lower low, beg your pardon. Um, and interestingly enough that this has been sort of the end result of that uh, event. Um I was interested to see that the algo actually did uh, suggest shorts uh, here. Keep in mind, this is a higher time frame bullish market. So I was very leery about uh, hunting shorts too aggressively. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'll stick with that. Like I had said earlier, I'm not really the biggest fan of shorting this market just yet. I still think it's still very bullish. It just got too far, too fast, too, too ahead of itself. And needed its time to uh, calm down and clean up. So I am really liking what I'm seeing here uh, because, and I put a tweet out basically to that effect was, um, you know, after big face rips up, uh, we're consolidating those gains nicely. Um, there's no doubt about it, we're building towards something here. You can see the coil. Um, we're not in a lower highs and lower lows. We're not in a higher highs and higher lows. We're in a lower highs and higher lows. In essence, we're building towards some sort of apex. Something's going to hit the fan here. You never really know uh, one way or the other uh, whether it's bull or bear until after the fact. I mean, that's just a trader's life. Um this is actually a really cool sort of experiment, and I'm always sort of working and tinkering and just keep on going and going and going and don't stop and keep trying, keep trying. Um, and um, one of the concepts that we teep in our, teach in our level two course is this concept called volume profile um, and this idea of value high and value low. Uh, and over the weekend, I was having fun uh, with the trading view tools. They'll actually uh, let you print sort of uh, running value high and value low on your studies. And uh, this one goes specifically out to Colleen. Colleen, if you are watching this video, I thought of you when I did this. This is such a good example of how the market was trapped between value high and value low um, and just sort of was range bound. And then we broke out through the top. Hopefully everybody can see this W here. Um, and this is a really good sort of example of accepting above value so the market breaks out you can see it actually comes down and kisses that developing value high level a couple times and this is often this is actually what often happens when the market does accept above or below value Vroom! <laughs> so really really good working example colleen and i'd like uh, next time i see you in the level two course I'd like for you to put that um, that um, um, uh, developing value levels uh, on your chart so that you can see this example of uh, of accepting above value and what often is the end result of acceptance above value. Usually, it means holy geez, get ready, something big's about to happen. So it's interesting when we look at value right now, you can see this is value high. And gee whiz, what an interesting coincidence. It actually lines up with the 78.6 Fib level really well. And then also, too, what I thought was really cool about this, notice this sort of dashed line right here. Um, I've been a really big fan recently of, um, yeah, where can I show you this? Um, yeah, um, so just keep this level in mind. Uh, that was, uh, 3,500, right on OK coin. Keep in mind your, 
cash market's probably going to be different. And then notice the candle body highs here. Look at that, 3,500. And I love this. Is, and there's that 78.6 I was just talking about a second ago. Um, I love this as a potential trade location. Super sexy. Candle body highs. Remember we said like wicks and tails like to be eaten. So we could like zip right up into here, eat a little bit of those wicks, and then, you know, M out and down you go. So uh, when I saw this, uh, when I was working on this over the weekend, it just jumped right out at me. I was so impressed. Um, you know, obviously, if I change uh, the amount of data included, it's going to alter a little bit. But point of the matter here is you can see, uh, and actually, we have a few cool things going on here. Uh, let's go. What I want to do is I want to get the range here. So there's the bottom of the range. All right. So um, we've got that that candle body level, higher time frame candle body level. Look at that cute little doji right there, right? The market opened up on this doji bar. It went up a little bit, and uh, no, I don't think so. You know, doji indecision. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? And then the next candle open up, I want to dump. See you later. So there's a whole bunch of trapped uh, bulls right in that doji candle there. They would love nothing more than to be able to hop off. So there is that developing high value. Notice that's also 78.6. And then, remember I had said earlier about uh, Bitcoin and 61.8 FIBS, Mountain Man, and AB equals CD levels. Gee whiz, hopefully everybody can see this blue. AB, CD takes us right up into that level. So... I, you know, I don't know how this coil is going to resolve. If the bulls take over or are in charge, my hunch is it's got this $13,500 level written all over it. Um, and then on the flip side, which I thought was really interesting, if we go A, B, C, D, that takes us down into here. Notice it developing low of value now is actually lining up really nicely off a of mountain man level there. Um, so we've got like mountain, we've got this key pivot low, we've got developing value low, we've got this AB equals CD harmonic. If we, you know, keep in mind there is a cute little M already working here and there's a cute little M working here. So I could understand if the bears, you know, step up here and defend their trade, we could easily dump down into these levels. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. And I guess what I'm really trying to tell you guys, and I'm having a hard time getting to it, value high, value low. That's kind of like this conversation where I think for the time being, we're sort of trapped inside value. Um and we'll know that the next big bull market is ready to rock and roll when we actually start accepting above value here. But I think that's going to take a lot of time to develop. Uh, I'd be really surprised if that happened very quickly. Right now, um, short-term expectations for me are 13500 if the bulls are in charge here, and then uh, 90 500 if the bears are still uh, driving the bus. So eh, not bad sort of medium term uh, price objectives. So that takes us down to an even lower time frame, right? And that's where I like to pull up um, my Algonator, because like I said, the Algonator has been giving us some just fantastic levels recently. Um, Algonator did potentially go bullish right here, but I hate when I see signals like this because this is like face rip mode, right? And you can see Algo went bull here. Um, and the rule of the Algo is, okay, as soon as it goes bull, we got to get some sort of structure. So I was actually quite pleased to see this pullback. Um, and then quite literally, you're just going to buy on a stop as long as the Algo is still painting bull. You're going to buy it on a stop one tick above these highs. And that would be sort of like, um, uh, let's see, um, kind of like this. You see how we, uh, well, no, well, okay, to a certain degree. We identified sort of horizontal support and resistance. I can buy on a breakout here. I can make the algo's bull. Give me one tick above this trading range high while the algo's bull, and away we go. Um 
Don't know whether I would use this one though. That one's a little bit suspect. As I said, this is a really good example of sort of vetting setups. Here's a pretty good one. So we had a trading range. Algo goes bull. Can I get a bullish signal while the algo is still bull? A breakout through the top. That actually came in there. Interesting how this thing came right down against its lows but held. And it just kept continue working its way higher. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make here is um, here was one where the algo went bull. Uh, didn't really have any structure to work with had this big sort of doji-ish bar here. So I was like, okay, if the uh, market can calm down a little bit, establish a range, and if we can get back up through the highs, then this signal fires. Never did come in, so just nothing to do there. Um, so uh, fast forward to today. As we said, uh, there was that high. Nothing came in following that. No follow-through. Market backed off. I'll go just, meh, not really that interested. It's interesting to see that at the same time a little bot setup is tried to form here you can see the cute little w here ideally if i'm going to trade the bot i'd like to see three higher lows just so i've got lots of levels to work my stops like i would work my stop down here um so you know you could make the argument there is the 25 level if i can get any sort of consolidation in here and a nice breakout then the bot starts to come alive and gee whiz remember we said that that higher time frame upside objective if we resolve bullish is 13,500. and so you can see how if the botters go long here and risk against these lows they're going to be looking for 13,200 and change not a coincidence in essence that is basically um that blue a b equals c d that is what that, that that setup right there. Boom, 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 boom. And that's how I would personally prefer to trade this. Now, what's the sort of final ingredient per my vetting this setup uh, that I've been working with for a while is I want to see Algo go uber bull here. Uh, and you can see Algo is almost indifferent right now. So he's not quite ready to go. Um, for me, I would still need a little bit more sort of development here. I wouldn't actually mind a nice little test, you know, candle body lows. We talked about that before. A uh, little test of these, low, of these lows, one more in earnest, maybe even a brush of this trend line here and this trend line here, um, just to validate that, yep, that, that bottom's for real, and, and then turn back up, and I'd love to see Algo go uber bull here be totally cool um so i'm just sort of just twiddling my thumbs right now um one other thing that i thought was really interesting here uh you can see how we are potentially forming uh davos um somebody just posted something eth on mex big four hour bot with algo bull firing so that's interesting how we were talking about eth why why don't we you know for fun why don't we take a look at that uh where should we do that why don't we do it here uh, and he said this is on uh mex thank you kevin so how do we do that eth usd uh on bitmex this one here the perpetual swap is that the one you're talking about All right, let's see what we got there. Oh boy, uh, four hour. Ooh, hello. Hmm, interesting. That probably actually gives more credence to this kind of stuff, eh? Because <laughs> I don't think ETH is in uh, Joshua's list. <laughs> I don't think he considers it fundamentally acceptable. <laughs> so that's cool. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so you know um i actually did up a chart oh this is actually really cool so uh level oneers any uh, do we have any level oneers in this call here right now Jeez, so quiet on the site uh did i forget oh did i oh geez i'm terrible at that thank you for posting the link there nathaniel um uh yeah okay kenny okay cool kenny can you see the volume impetus signal can you see the bulls waking up here can you see that morton you're also level one good 
Can you see the volume impetus signal here? Higher high, higher high, higher high. And remember when I posted this chart in class um, and I had said, are the book buyers actually going to step up and wake up here? So this is an awesome example of volume impetus as we're speaking. So a uh, great eye, Kevin. Good job on uh, mentioning this. You know, the developing value high and value low again. Value high, interestingly enough, is actually just below the mountain man level here. If we see this volume come in here, that might actually push value up. So let's keep an eye on this and let's see if value high actually gets pushed up into this reload zone. My hunch is this thing probably wants to go up and test that horizontal support and resistance level right up there. See that? Doink. Which, gee whiz, what a coincidence just so happens to be Mountain Man. It's quite remarkable how this stuff all sort of lines up after a while. So let's see what va developing value high does here. Interesting how developing value low just happens to be right off of the line in the sand there. Um, so really good example of volume impetus. I also put out a really cool tweet even earlier today where I said, wow, is this thing, this thing's also coiling just like Bitcoin. So really good example, and this probably is also a good example of like Davos. Yeah, is Dav on the call there? Dav, are you over there on um, – on, uh, there's Colleen. Colleen, you, you've got the volume indicator, right? Uh, you got the um, um, volume profile uh, indicator? I think you have that. Colleen, are, can you hear me? Where's Colleen? Colleen, are you around? Anyway, point of the matter here is you can just, it's one of the criteria selection. You go into your uh, volume uh, profile settings. Yeah, there you are. And it's down here, developing value. See that? Right down at the bottom of the screen. So, um, and they put a really weird, like their default color is like navy blue, which is really hard to see. So I change it to a color that I can see. Okay, so uh, back to Kevin's conversation. Let's uh, vet this out and see what it looks like. So there is the MEX chart. Um, man, this could be a really, really big setup, eh? And it's kind of interesting how we were talking about how Ethereum could, you know, its 50% level is so long. Um, so there is the range bot setup. Uh, I don't mind when tails go in there. Really, I, I can live with that. It's it's not the end of the world, especially since I've got one, two, three lows to work with here. I can live with that. It's, um, you know, again, trading's more of an art than a science, all that kind of conversation. Uh, maybe you actually start drawing your lines off of that level, right, right in there. And if that's the case, well, well, then we didn't break 66. I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, but, you know, I, I if anything, you know, anybody is like, well, I want to learn how to trade and all that kind of stuff, you know, please understand definitely trading is more of an art than a science. Um, and you're just going to have to learn with what, what works for you. A lot of these levels and setups that we like to use, they've been vetted. And some people like using them. Others don't like using particular ones just because it just doesn't work for them. And that's totally fine. I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong. I'm just – well, I mean, generally speaking, I don't like people – when the market's overbought, they call it oversold. That just drives you crazy. Or if there's a big M that come into the market, they're, they're, they're bullish. That's, that's just asking for trouble. Um, but on balance, what has to end up happening here is you have to sort of learn the basics, location tools, uh, indicator tools, uh, structure tools, uh, try and come up with three unrelated reasons to consider taking a trade, and then just get in there and take the trades. Uh, I, I could live with that 66. That, that to me isn't a deal breaker. So then the question is, um, you know, first off, do we have this level correct? It's really important with the bot to be very precise here. So uh, 271.45 is a low. Oh, looks like that's a bit low. And this is about the only way I figured out on TradingView how to get this so that you can actually make it correct because you don't want to alter these numbers. These numbers have to stay exactly the same. 271.45, 271.45. All right, that's good. 
All right, and then we will throw on the bot trade template. And there's 25. Oh, and I love when the bot basically sets. You can see that the market has set up this structural level. Uh, this is probably a good example where, you know, the really savvy traders remember that sort of, you know, uh, um, how do we say this? Trading's more of an art than a science. You have to get the feel for the market. Uh, I often encourage people if they can to try and front run the bot. Um, so hopefully you can see how this W here gives you those three lows. So this is actually a really good example where you could have front run the bot. Um, and now that the 25 level is hit and this level has been taken out, you can go, phew, okay, good. <laughs> I got I got in, the bot did fire. And now if we move up to move stop to scratch level and it comes down to scratch, well, you actually have got a little bit of a cushion even on your scratch trade by front running the bot. But that's very advanced stuff, right? You got to really have a feel for sort of the, the market and trade. Um, I don't really have a problem if somebody said, you know, Brian, I saw that W, so I bought it. Okay, that's fine. Um, it'd be interesting to go back to our higher time frame charts and just see if any of these levels sort of line up. Uh, oh, did I get rid of it? Okay, well, uh, 61.8 here is uh, three, call it 350, sort of that area. So let's go back down to here. Three, ah, interesting. So you can move your stop to scratch on a test of that 61.8. And notice, you know, if, uh, if we come up and fail at these candle body highs, like we can just dip into this wick and just eat it a little bit. Um, and if we crap out after that, right, maybe do something like that. And if we crap out, then you just walk away at scratch. Yeah, shit happens. Next bus in 10 minutes. Um, and then, you know, basically what this means is if Ethereum goes up and tests its old high and, uh, and breaks it, and actually even just a test of the high, it doesn't even have to break it. If we can go up and test this high, then you can start locking in profits, right? And if you start getting market structure, you can move your stop to below that and and hop off if if we you know crap out below those levels. And then ultimately this bot setup's target is, let's see where its target is, $411. So let's see where that takes us. Uh, that will take us to new highs, and then, uh, but I don't think it's on here, is it? Oh, yeah, it is good. Um, 400, uh, what did we say the target was? 411. Uh, I don't know if there's any spread between the cash market and, um, and this MEX contract, but basically 411. Takes us right up. Oh, isn't that interesting? Look at that, son of a bitch. So in essence, uh, that bot target basically just lines up with this AB equals CD. So AB, CD takes us up into, you know, what is that, 420, 430. So this little bot here, AB, CD, is going to also take us up into that level. And interestingly enough, remember we said, Horizontal support and resistance, um, that's, you know, a pretty important level for higher time frames. Also notice that we also have horizontal support and resistance off of that level. And we've talked lots about this to you guys in the past. You know, once you get up into this area, where is horizontal support and resistance? Look left. You could really make the argument that there's a ton of trapped bulls all right up in this wick here. Now, they got released to a certain degree on this candle. You notice this candle did come up into there. So some of them got some release. But since the market failed here and dumped, there's still a whole bunch of trapped bulls sitting in that wick right there. So my hunch is uh, Ethereum ratchets up into these AB equals CDs, just like we saw on Litecoin. You've seen this on uh, Bitcoin. Rinse and repeat. Jesus, this stuff's a broken record after a while. Um, my hunch is uh, that lower time frame MEX bot target basically takes you up into uh, AB equals CD. 
and then up into this sort of you know last battle zone on ethereum up in there and really you know to be perfectly blunt with you all i don't see any reason why this thing can't ratchet up to its 50 percent level but maybe what we have to do is a b equals cd then consolidate a little bit and then our push higher um also interesting too colleen do you see how this is going to be literally a test of value high <laughs> i love using colleen as my guinea pig <laughs> so this actually this should be a really good working example let's go and throw on the developing value high now i don't know why stamp looks so crappy here like this um but uh let's let's go and put on the developing value and let's just see what it looks like all right so you can see there was value high working its way down, working its way down. And notice how value high basically lines up with that AB equals CD, that bot uh, trading level. Shouldn't surprise us one bit. And, you know, the irony of it all is that you could even argue this might even be a hog trade, right? 80% rule. We dumped. We're below value. We accepted back into value 80% of the time. We should go back up and text value high. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh, mercy. Okay. So, uh, yep, I'd have to agree with you, uh, Kevin. I like what I'm seeing out of Ethereum. We've been chattering about this Ethereum for a while now, eh? Now, the piece de resistance. Uh, what does the Algonator say? Dun, dun, dun. Where is Algonator? Uh, here we are. Boom. Oh, it's going to tease us. There it is. Algonator went Uber Ball. Uber Ball. Uber Ball. Uber Ball. Uber Ball. So you've got Uber Ball. You've got bot levels. You got nice volume impetus. The bulls are waking up. You got a trade there. It's not a bad idea. Good French. <laughs> what did I say, Gabby? Did I say something bad? Ah, merde. <laughs> Does that have to get bleeped out now on the on the French version? <laughs> okay, uh, that's cool, Cole. Uh, Cole says Algo looks even better on Kraken on the lower time frames. I'm totally fine. Uh, please be aware that the algo is uh, still very much a beta. You know, I'm certainly not, uh, oh, la piece de resistance. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. Um, no guarantees from the management here. And if anything, I absolutely love when algonator and bot levels correspond because then we've got trade location. We got indicator confirmation, and now we have some beautiful structure to work with. Three reasons for a trade. Get in there and take those trades. So actually, you know what? I think I'm going to tweet this out because I got to tell you, man, that's a damn good-looking shirt. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for mentioning that. All right, so interesting how Algo actually went bullish there. I think you could actually make the argument the signal came in on a break of these highs right there, right? Eh? I think uh, that's the structure right there. But, you know, bots are bots, totally fine. Um, so let's, uh, let's, uh, let's keep an eye on this bad boy. And hopefully now, you know, this illustration should show you how the bot produces a nice uh, three to one risk reward. That's ideally what you'd like to see here. 2.95, so I must have my math wrong here somehow. But anyway, uh, we can leave it at that. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so cool. Cool beans. Thank you, Kevin. I swear we're going to turn this into a science whether the market likes it or not. All right, so I think I will tweet that out. Uh, well, why don't we say... Cool example of algo indicator confirmation. Uh, uh, aligning, aligning with uh, trade level tool. 
file. Uh, to help set up a great one risk reward trade idea. Great stuff. And, you know, everybody who's watching on YouTube, you have to understand this is actually how we do this is uh, we're all about like one plus one equals three. I don't sit here on a daily basis and say, oh, yeah, buy this, buy that, uh, do this, do that. Everybody must understand this is critical. And this is where I actually got a little bit angry with quite a few site members here over this bear market is we do not build robots here at TRI. We don't. I don't want robots. Robots are useless. I, and, you know, that's that whole sort of big connect where people fucking didn't even use their brains and they were just blindly buying into this guy's song and dance and the more he got excited the more euphoric they got and the more money they threw at his silly ponzi we do not want robots here at tri what we want is a collective community that's all looking for this stuff and we all work together this is the the power the 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 what makes us different than the rest of the world um Oh, did I just swear? Sorry, Colleen. <laughs> I have a draw. Hey, when I get excited, I drop F bombs right, left, and center. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, like this was basically somebody who just in, in our lounge and a guy I really respect. This guy's the fucking shit. Although, oh, no. Oh, I just did a double swear there. <laughs> but uh, Kavarkinator is just absolutely awesome. Um, and he's a damn fine fisherman too, right? <laughs> anyway, he, uh, he uh, hopefully he's coming to Vancouver here. We're going to go out. We can't do the deep sea fishing here in Vancouver because it sucks. But um, um, we are going to go to uh, indoor electric cart racing. And uh, I think he's going to kick my butt <laughs> racing. <laughs> but anyway, the point here is that we all work together. Uh, we're all one plus one equals three. And, you know, Kavarkinator just uh, mentioned this while I was doing this show here, free for you guys. We walked through, we vetted the setup, and it turns out it's a pretty damn good idea. That's what I love about TRI. This, this site is not about Brian Beamish. Brian Beamish, pff, he's just another market participant. Who cares? This site is all about the community and us all working together to be better traders together. I love that. Absolutely love it. So anyway, there you go. Proof of the pudding's in the eating. Let's see what happens. I think I just tweeted that out. Let's see, did it go out? Yeah, maybe. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Cool example of algo indicator confirmation aligning with trade levels to a bot. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so it's a little past noon. I've been blabbing away for a while now. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, offering. Looks like a couple people had to bail here. Um, so, um, you know, have yourselves a great day, everybody. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, I don't want to be too long winded on these. So, um, you know, try and play from a position of strength. Um, the great part about it is we we're building out just an incredibly powerful community of, of people that love to work together and to help each other. Um, the market is the market. The market will do what the market does. Try and hunt your setups. Uh, try and, um, you know, create plan um, to help you deal with the anxiety of risking money in the marketplace. That is really the hardest part about all of this is just keeping your head when, you know, things start going awry. And that's why building a plan and, and laying out exactly what it is that gets you to act ahead of time um dealing with all the risk management how much money you're going to actually you know uh potentially lose if your idea doesn't work ahead of time is so critical um and and then you can just come and have fun in the market on a daily basis so uh would you put that chart in the lounge too please which this one the eth chart or the btc chart or the setup chart which one are you talking about ma'am all right, I'll put the ball. That's fine. Um, and let's uh, let's keep an eye on Kavarkinator's idea here because I think it's pretty solid. 
All right, so there is uh, Kvarkinator's Kvark. Uh, here is that uh, ETH uh, chart with the developing value levels. And a really great example, I got to say, of nice volume impetus signal. I was going to say, and I, I got off topic, but check this out. Um, I don't know whether um, Dav's on the call or not, but this is totally in his wheelhouse. Can everybody see uh, the W in OBV and the W in RSI at the same time? What do we call those? Really, really good example. Hey, Davo, not funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, we got to say that. Yeah, remember, everybody, we don't want robots, right? We don't give you advice, do this, do that. We don't do that. We, we just don't do that. What we do is we say, look at this is what setups you should look like. Location tools, indicator tools, structure tools. Um, this is the type of risk takers there are, are out there. Try and figure out what type of risk taker are you, your little old lady. I get a sneaky suspicion that a lot of people that define themselves as little old ladies last year, thinking that this was just like fish shooting fish in a barrel, it turns out they were never little old ladies to begin with. And they didn't even understand what it really means to be a little old lady. Um, that's the way it goes in trading. I mean, you have to really get in touch with what type of risk taker you are. Uh, and then finally, you know, just try and figure out what signals, what setups work for you, what type of risk taker you are, and then you just get in there and rinse and repeat. And that's really what a trader's life is all about. Okay, so uh, I posted the uh, two Ethereum charts in the lounge there for you, Colleen. Um, we can also throw in the Bitcoin chart if you'd like. Not nearly as compelling, but nonetheless, you can see the Ws are trying to come in here on OBV and, uh, and um, our oscillators. So uh, let's keep an eye out here. Uh, we might see Bitcoin pop as well. Um, great signal. Thank you, Kvarkinator, for that awesome uh, illustration of Al uh, Algo going uber bull um, and, um, and uh, it aligning with other setups. Just beautiful. Absolutely textbook. But uh, as for Bitcoin right now, I'm kind of sitting on the fence. I'm not really getting uber signals. I am watching uh, Bitcoin across uh, multiple exchanges just because that's the crazy guy I am. So uh, watching it on Max, no Ubers. Watching it on OKCoin, no Ubers. Uh, watching it on Stamp, uh, watching the CME futures, no Ubers. So not, <coughs> excuse me, not ready to get as bullish on Bitcoin as we are here on Ethereum on this signal. So, okay, why don't we leave it at that? Uh, you guys have yourselves a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the offering. Uh, great interacting with all of you guys uh, uh, and ladies. Um, have yourselves a great day. All the best. Oh, and we should also maybe just do a quick plug. You saw Gabby in the, um, in the uh, YouTube page there. Uh, Gabby's sort of like our official uh, YouTube uh, spokesperson, captain, quarterback. I'm not quite sure what you're doing. Uh, I don't know whether you guys on uh, Twitter and, and, and social and all that um, are really um, uh, that active, perceptive, or whatever, but hopefully everybody saw that the TRI channel on YouTube has gone through a bunch of changes recently. Um, that's all thanks to Gabby. Advisor, that's what you want to call yourself now, okay. <laughs> um, and... Um, uh, gotta say, uh, the channel itself is looking much more professional, uh, now. Uh, I don't know whether I can show you it. There it is there. I mean, looking pretty slick here. Way to go, Gabby. Uh, very, very, uh, polished look. Um, I think we're getting pretty good feedback, um, on balance, you know, getting lots of thumbs up. As we say, and as uh, the, you know, the, uh, I guess the MM crypto guys love to say, you know, hit that uh, like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell and all that kind of stuff. Um, and really at the end of the day, all that matters is, did you learn anything from listening to good old Uncle Brian? Hopefully you did. Um, and, uh, you know, by all means, if you need help, uh, that's why we put the school together. 
um, where we just step by step, week after week, go through, you know, what does a trading plan look like? What does your strategic vision look like? What does, uh, you know, tactical setups look like? How, what, you know, we go through the process of trying to figure out the three reasons for a trade. We go through the process of, you know, defining all the different risk takers and trying to figure out what type of risk taker you are. That's the whole point of the school program. Um, so, uh, if you are interested in, in learning how to do this professionally, you're more than welcome to join the community. We do have a seven day free trial, uh, which we're seeing quite a few people are, uh, taking advantage of. So please, you know, feel free to, uh, to take advantage of that. Just try not to abuse that because, uh, some people have actually been abusing it a little bit, but, uh, we're all about PMA. We're all about trying to work together. One plus one equals three. And hopefully you heard in this broadcast today, um, you know, I think we're pre generally pretty upbeat, uh, pretty positive people. Um, and that's sort of how we like to play this game. Right? All right, everybody, I'm going to stop talking now or I'll be here another hour. So all the best. Have yourselves a great day and bye for now.